These are the user settings. If you don't know how to get here, please see the first video in the series um, to open the app and uh, log on to the remote settings and access this page. To set the time, click on the time, um, click on the time and date here and you'll get the uh, time and date setting wheels. I'm not going to do it because um, my time is already correct. And when you finish setting it, make sure you press the save button to save the time to the inverter. And there's a confirmation box which says setting success or setting failed. If it's failed, it hasn't managed to set it and you'll need to just repeat. Now this is usually set automatically by the connection with the Solax servers. Um, but if your connection is local or the communications have issues, for example, you may have to set it manually. There are a couple of things to consider. For example, when you're charging from the grid on off-peak times, um, the inverter may charge at the wrong time and this will cost you money if the clock is wrong. So make sure the date and time are correct. When the clocks go forward and back during daylight saving times, it's also important to check that the inverter clock changes at the same time. If it ends up an hour out, you could also end up, for example, charging your battery outside of off-peak times. Um, checking the time zone is also really important, uh, but you can actually only do that on the Sowlex Cloud website at the moment. So if you find, for example, your inverter, you set the clock, and then within an hour or so, it's changed or it's off by an hour or it's off by five hours and this is causing you issues. It's probably the case that the time zone is set incorrectly and you'll need to go onto the uh, Solax Cloud web um, to set the time zone. I think it's in the site setup. Um, again, Home Assistant users, uh, the clock's very important to record the data at the correct times in history. Um, so you need the sensors to reset at a specific time and the same ones on the inverter need to reset at the time. So if they're an hour out, it can cause issues with, uh, with data history. Moving on to language, very self-explanatory. It's the language that you'd like to see the interface written in. Um, pick language from the list, click OK and then click save to make sure that you save it. The third item in the basic user settings is off-grid mute. Now, I don't think this is a particularly good place to have a setting like this. It's not exactly the first thing that crosses a user's mind. Um, so what is it if we just expand that? Um, mute no, mute yes. Now off-grid mute turns the EPS beep on and off EPS stands for emergency power supply and it's what happens when there's a power cut and the inverter starts to supply the EPS circuits with power. So this setting is a way of turning the beep on or off. Now because it's a mute setting, um, no turns the beep on and yes turns the beep off. Um, this is also a useful way of knowing if one of the breakers or MTBs in your house is, is tripped or is faulty and um, because your inverter will start beeping until it gets fixed. So uh, click on the options, you can pick yes to mute it, no for it to beep and then click OK and as usual click save. Thank you very much for watching, see you on the next video.